What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and it's time for the week two battle of the Ingoli Legends, where the Venus Venusaur, of course, are up against the Lexicon Larvitar, who are coached by a shiny Marinok. Now, if you did not check it out already, of course, you can find the battle analysis matchup in the battle video before this. Well, not really a battle video, but it'll be in the same playlist. As you can see here, we did end up going with Charizard Venusaur, kind of as the offensive core with Dragalge in the back. Um, I went with modest Charizard Y with only enough speed to out, outpace uh, if he decided to go really bulky Garchomp, just a little bit of speed there just to, to handle something like that. Then I put a bunch in HP, just in case. Uh, Venusaur is max speed, max special attack because it's one of the one fun chlorophyll builds with Hidden Power Ice for Garchomp, otherwise a Sludge Bomb, Giga Drain, and Sleep Powder. Uh, if I needed to, I could put something to sleep. Took a kiss, I went with the bulky Calm build because I also went with Fortress on the physically defensive side. Fortress has Volt Switch in order to get out of there against um, the likes of Melodic, or I thought he would actually bring Starmie, which he didn't bring. Uh, he actually had no hazard control, which I was very surprised to see. Uh, of course, Aurora's has a Choice Scarf with Snow Warning just in order to pick up a couple of KOs. Uh, I did expect him to bring Tyranitar, which he didn't bring Tyranitar either. And then Dragalgia Specs, just because he had nothing to handle Dragon-type attacks. I was quite surprised to see Camerupt and Muck on his end. Not as surprised to see Kunkledur or Garchomp. I was actually a little bit dismayed that I didn't bring Crawdon because against the team that he has, Crawdon would have done pretty well outside of Kunkledur. But I think Kunkledur can also pressure enough to keep Crawdon off the field. So didn't really want to deal with that. Uh, Jolteon, I just really needed to make sure that it wasn't a Scarf set because then that could outspeed Aurora's and hit it with something weird like a Hidden Power Fighting. Um, but outside of that, I, I wasn't too threatened by Muck or Camera up or Melodic. They're all rel relatively passive Pokemon for the most part. So I knew as long as I just kept some good outpouring of damage to his side of the field, things would go all right. I led with Charizard uh, just because it was a good matchup against everything but Camera up and Garchomp. And I figured if he led with either Camerupt or Garchomp, he would be putting up Stealth Rocks. Uh, so that's exactly what happens. I get a free switch out into Togekiss. I just went for Air Slash to gauge what type of camera this is. Looks like it's definitely um, more physically defensive because I don't have any special investment on this Togekiss. Uh, but he does surprise me with Will-O-Wisp. I didn't expect him to have that on camera. I thought he'd just go for a rock type move. Uh, but here I do figure that he's going to switch out maybe into Muck just because I have a fairy type out. So I go for Baton Pass, that way if he did stay in, I could just um, hopefully go out into something else if he decided to stay in. But this is nice because I can switch out into Dragalge and he actually shows me Curse and I get to show him a Specs Adaptability Boosted Draco Meteor. Uh, if I didn't have choice Specs, he might have been able to set up on me after one Draco Meteor, but just the sheer amount of damage that it does, it almost one hit KOs him. Uh, if I had Stealth Rocks up or Spikes, it would have one KO'd him. So I'm able to polish Muck off very, very nicely with almost no damage to Dragalge. Um, now the bad thing about this situation is that he gets to bring in something to set up because I'm obviously Specs and I'm locked into Draco Meteor at minus four. So uh, he goes out into Garchomp. I just go immediately out into Togekiss. I know if he predicts that and goes for Swords Dance or Stone Edge, without a boost, I can live a Stone Edge. And uh, if he goes for Swords Dance, then he that's fantastic because that means that he's most likely not sashed. Uh, I was hoping that he'd be Lumbear or something like that because if if he is sashed, then I still get to bring in Snow again. I know he's not scarfed at the very least. And now if he is sashed, I get to break the sash with the hail. And I'm going to knock him down to the possible sash with Freeze Dry. I went for Freeze Dry here just in case Melodic came in. Uh, freeze Dry is an easy KO on Garchomp anyway. But since he's not uh, sashed, I get to just take that hit very nicely. Uh, I'm going to switch out Aurorus here into my Fortress. Uh, he just goes for a knockoff. I figured that he would go for a knockoff, but I really didn't want to lose specs on Dragalge. And I also didn't want to risk the possible rock type coverage move that would still be super effective against Aurorus on Charizard. Uh, he does, I know that Conqueror gets Fire Punch, but you just don't see it very often. And so I was like, maybe he won't have it, but that's kind of silly. Why wouldn't he have it, knowing that I'm probably going to bring Fortress? Uh, I'm going to use this opportunity to go out into um, Charizard here. Now he's taking a few turns of Hail. If he does not have an Assault Vest, I have a good chance of one-hit KOing him with Overheat. 
actually went with Overheat, Flamethrower, Dragon Pulse, and Focus Blast. Uh, no Roost. Just trying to either hit um, Garchomp or Tyranitar, and then for all other occasions, just spam Fire type moves. Uh, but that HP investment actually pays off here. Me living the Mach Punch at 2 HP. Gonna take out Conkleder with the Flamethrower, which is very, very nice. Now that that's out of the way, Aurorus has a field day. A snow field day. A snow day. Aurorus has a snow day against his team. Uh, I didn't feel comfortable switching out right there because he could go for a coverage move. Plus, I didn't really have anything besides Dragaji that I wanted to switch in, and I wanted to keep Dragaji healthy because I needed to take on Jolteon later, 1v1, if necessary. Uh, so he goes out in the camera up. I still have two turns of sun left. I just went for Sleep Powder here because I actually wanted to stall out my own sun. Uh, if he went for a fire type move in the sun, then it would definitely blow away Venusaur. But if I could get rid of the sun since he's a more defensive oriented camera up, there's a good chance that I could live it. So I actually get a critical hit on that first Giga Drain. Not going to end up mattering too much just based on the way he plays these next turns out. He goes for Will-O-Wisp thinking residual damage would be more useful, but since the sun was up for that last turn, if he had gone for Flamethrower, there's a good chance that between Stab, Super Effective, and Sun that it would have taken me out even without the uh, special attack investment. I get a second critical hit on the Giga Drain, but since he didn't go for Flamethrower, I don't know that the critical hits for Giga Drain mattered too much. Uh, they mattered in the sense that I might have had more overall residual damage on Venusaur, but uh, since he didn't go for Flamethrower, it didn't matter too much. Now I get a third critical hit from the same Venusaur on Melodic, that actually really may have mattered because we see how much damage Ice Beam does here. And that's why I was thinking that, eh, I don't know if a Flamethrower would have KO'd me outside of the sun. But that means that Melodic uh, definitely would have probably run into a three hit KO scenario after Leftovers. So, uh, uh, kind of hard to say there. Uh, as Jolteon comes in, I really just wanted to make sure that I got damage on it because now that allows Aurorus to basically clean up his team. Uh, plus, he didn't really have anything to hit Dragalgy with. He could hit Dragalgy with the uh, the Ice Beam from Melodic, but if Melodic didn't have any speed investment, then my Dragalgy would outspeed his Melodic based on my speed investment. So, uh, But I do get to come in here, and I'm just going to click Blizzard because I don't have very many opportunities to click Blizzards that won't miss. Uh, I could have gone for Freeze Dry just to make sure that it KOs the Melodic, but Melodic's at such low HP that it doesn't really matter. Plus, there's a possibility of Hail hitting him at the end of the turn, so I went for... A little bit of style points with Snowmageddon. Serious Snow Day for Aurorus in this battle. Uh, three KOs, very impressive for Aurorus. But that was a fun battle. Thank you very much to the Lexicon, Lexington Larvitar for the fun match. And in week three of the Indigo League of Legends, I actually think, um, if I recall correctly, that is, for week three, I'm up against, I think Sketchy Smeargle. I'm about 95% sure. Let me check really fast. Yeah, Sketchy Smeargle. So that'll be a fun match. Yet another opponent that I have not faced before. We're going to do our best in that match too. But for now, the Venus Venusaur are 2-0 in the Indigo League of Legends. So uh, this is my first upload of the year. So huzzah. Uh, and it's kind of appropriate for those of you guys facing winter weather. It's relatively cold where I am. Right around 30 degrees tonight. Um, but no snow. So meh. Not really mattering too much. I will talk to you guys later, and I do hope you have a good week. Bye-bye now.